the Lord says, I not only want to restore what you've lost, I want to restore you. I want to restore your heart. I want to restore your confidence. I want to restore your joy, your peace. I want to make an example out of your life so that other people can say, that's what I want God to do in my life. One word from God can change your life forever. The Rock is a growing, multilingual, multi-campus church that started in Anaheim, California. Over the past 15 years, The Rock has grown to eight campuses, including two campuses in Anaheim, plus extension campuses in Seal Beach, Lake Elsinore, and Santa Clarita, California, as well as Kalamazoo and Battle Creek, Michigan, Miami, Florida, and announcing the newest Rock Campus grand opening in Corona, California. If you are in the Corona area, Please join us for The Rock's grand opening Sunday services on September 13th and 20th with service times at 9 and 11.30 a.m. The church is located at 268 North Lincoln Avenue in Corona, California. For more information or directions, please visit jerrydearman.com. Come and be a part of the exciting things that God is doing at The Rock. I want to talk about signs on the calendar. And I'm going to begin by reminding you of something that I talked about on the very first lesson of Signs of His Coming from the prophet Daniel. And uh, the angel said to Daniel in Daniel 9, 24 to 26, he said, 70 weeks, everybody say weeks. We learned that each week here was not seven days, but a seven year period. The angel said to Daniel, 70 weeks are determined for your people, the Jews, and for your holy city, Jerusalem. Look at verse 25. Know therefore and understand that from the going forth of the command to restore and rebuild and build Jerusalem until Messiah the Prince, Jesus, there shall be seven weeks, seven seven seven-year periods, and 62 weeks, or 62 seven-year periods. So there's seven plus 62, that's 69 weeks, or 69 seven-year periods for a total of 483 years. Verse 26, and after the 62 weeks, which would be also after the seven, or after 483 years, Messiah shall be cut off, that means killed, capital punishment, but not for himself. So talk about a specific detailed prophecy that gave the timeline to Daniel of exactly when Jesus was going to show up, exactly when he was going to be killed. He said from the time that the command to rebuild Jerusalem goes out until Messiah the Prince, who will be cut off, killed, but not for himself, it's going to be 483 years. I mean, that is just so clear in Scripture. So what I'm showing you is we started this whole series off with one particular sign that was an example of the sign of his first coming. And this particular sign happens to be a sign on the calendar. Now, after the 483 years finished, then we went into something called the church age. The church age, that's this long period of time in between the time that Jesus was crucified and raised from the dead and ascended back into heaven. And now we're some 2,000 years removed from that. So we went into the church age or the times of the Gentiles or what Joel and Peter called the last days. Well, the angel's prophecy to Daniel actually mentioned 70 weeks, not just 69 weeks. And so we only talked about the 69 weeks. So where is that other week? Well, the other week is the tribulation period. It's the the last seven years that are going to happen. So here's kind of how this thing works out. When King Artaxerxes gave the command to rebuild Jerusalem because it had been destroyed, God had prophesied to Daniel that there were 70 weeks or 70 seven-year periods that are determined for your people, the Jews, and for your holy city. And so he said, from the time that King Artaxerxes, actually he didn't mention the king's name, he just said the command, from the time that the command is given to build Jerusalem again, he said there's going to be seven 
seven-year periods and 62. So for a total of 69 seven-year periods, then Messiah will happen. But he didn't say anything about that last one because he said 70 weeks. So there's still one period. So here's how it works. When King Art Artaxerxes gave the command to build Jerusalem, it's like God had a stopwatch. And as soon as he gave the command, God clicked the stopwatch and it started ticking. Tick, 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 tick. Seven 70 year periods, seven seven year periods into it, or 49 years into it, Jerusalem was rebuilt. And then another 62 seven year periods, Jesus shows up, he's crucified and raised from the dead, and God stops the stopwatch. So 69 of the seven, 70 seven year periods have already ticked off and are completed with the coming of Jesus. But the stopwatch is stopped right now, or has been stopped. And what we're waiting for is that last week, or that last seven-year period. Well, what's in between the two? Well, this is not the Jews' time. This is the times of the Gentiles. But once the times of the Gentiles ends, God's going to snap that stopwatch again, and one more seven-year period is going to tick off, which will be the completion of the 70 weeks of Daniel. And as you know, that seven-year period is the tribulation period. Now, that was talking about signs of the times of the first coming of Jesus. But now I want to transition into signs on the calendar with regard to the second coming. Now, Luke 21, 24, listen to this is where Jesus said, And Jerusalem will be trampled by Gentiles until the times of the Gentiles are fulfilled. So you need to know that from 70 A.D., when the Romans destroyed Jerusalem, that Jerusalem has been trampled by the Gentiles all this time. And we might say until 1967 in the Six-Day War, when the Jewish people, the state of Israel, recaptured Jerusalem. And so... 1967. So it could be that we're very close because that's been 48 years ago now that they recaptured Jerusalem and 48 years ago. And so it's like according to the calendar that we have in the Bible, God's ready right now to bam, snap that thing and go into a seven year period. How many of you with me on this? Is this interesting to anybody? Okay. Now, Let's look at Matthew 24 now and the 29th verse. Jesus said, immediately after the tribulation, so this is at the end of that seven-year period, immediately after the tribulation of those days, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give us light, the stars of, uh, will fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens will be shaken. Then the sign of the Son of Man will appear in heaven, and then all the tribes of the earth will mourn, and they will see the Son of Man coming on the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he will send his angels with a great cloud of a uh, sound of a trumpet. Sound of a trumpet. Everybody say, sound of a trumpet. Yes. And what will they do with the sound of a trumpet? They will gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Sounds like a rapture to me. Sound of a trumpet, gathering together all the elect, all the believers. Sounds like a, a rapture to me. I just don't like the placement of it. Do you? This is talking about at the end of the tribulation period. Look at verse 32. Now learn this parable from the fig tree. Everybody say fig tree. Fig tree. When its branch has already become tender and puts forth leaves, you know that summer is near. So you also, when you see all these things, know that it is near at the doors. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. So let's talk about that fig tree for just a moment. In Hosea chapter 9, the 10th verse, God says, I found Israel like grapes in the wilderness. I saw your fathers as the first fruits on the fig tree. I saw your fathers, talking to Israel, I saw your fathers as the first fruits on the what? The fig tree. So when Jesus brings up the fig tree, we have a correlation in the Old Testament that God used the fig tree to talk about that tree that has the fruits called the children of Israel or the ancient fathers. He said the ancient fathers were the first fruits on this fig tree. 
Well, guess what? The people today aren't the first fruits because that was many years ago. That was a millennia ago. See, this is, this is in this day and age. So Jesus is talking about the fig tree, and he says, when it becomes tender and puts forth leaves. You're thinking, well, wait a minute. This fig tree is thousands of years old. No, no, no. You, you don't remember that Israel was scattered all over the world. And so that fig tree was plucked up, pulled out from the roots, and dispersed all over the world. But in these last days, God has gathered them from all over the world. And he's planted them again in Israel. And this fig tree became a state again in 1948. And so that's 67 years ago. Well, what did Jesus say? He said, when you see these things happening, you need to know that it's near at the doors. When you see this happening, what is that? That's a sign. And it's a calendar sign because he's giving us something to watch He's saying, when you see the fig tree again, and it begins to put forth leaves, in other words, this new nation begins to blossom, he says, you need to know that it's near. It's at the very doors. And then he makes this statement in verse 34. Look at it. Assuredly, I say to you, this generation will by no means pass away till all these things take place. And let me remind you that all these things include the tribulation period, seven years. Well, we know the tribulation period has not begun yet. At least I don't think so. <laughs> we don't see it happening yet. But we have to understand that whatever timeline we have, we have to include seven more years for the tribulation period. And Jesus said, this generation won't pass away till all these things take place. Well, in 1948, Israel became a nation again, and they're 67 years old. Jesus said... This generation will not pass away till all these things take place. Well, you've got to take 67 years and add another seven years to it because all these things include the tribulation period. So we're talking about uh, 74 years now. Well, how, how old is this, this guy going to be, this generation? Well, I guess somebody might say, well, maybe we should count not when they just became a state, but when they reclaimed Jerusalem, which would have been 1967, which means... This generation will be 48 years. Either way, let me just tell you, we're close. Look, anybody out there, you're gambling, you know, you're rolling the dice, and you're saying, I got more time to party, I got more time. You don't have time. You don't have time. Plus, you don't want that life anyway. God's got such a good life for you. Now's the time to press in, to seek God, to call on His name, find out what He's got for you. All right, let me go over to Luke now, Luke chapter 10. And uh, I'm going to run through this really quick, but it has to do with the calendar. In Luke chapter 10, Jesus was talking about loving, the na loving your neighbor, and a guy said, who is my neighbor? So Jesus responds to that question with this parable. He said, a certain man went down from Jerusalem to Jericho and fell among thieves. Everybody say Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Everybody say Jericho. Everybody say thieves. thieves. If you have, if you have a, a pencil or something, you got your Bible open, you can underline these. Who was, who, listen to this, stripped him of his clothing, wounded him, and departed, leaving him, listen to this, half dead. Interesting. Now, by chance, a certain priest came down that road. And when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Likewise, a Levite, when he had arrived at that place, came and looked and passed by on the other side. Verse 33. But a certain Samaritan, as he journeyed, came where he was, the wounded man. And when he saw him, he had compassion. So he went to him and bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine, and he set him on his own animal, brought him to an inn, and took care of him. On the next day, when he departed, he took out two denarii, gave them to the innkeeper, and said to him, Take care of him, and whatever more you spend, when I come again, I will repay you. Now, I'm going to run through this really quick because it's just one of the uh, points that I want to hit. But uh, some people would say, uh, hermeneutically, this passage 
has nothing to do with what I'm about to explain to you. Okay? And let me just say that contextually, in other words, in the context of the whole chapter and passage, uh, Jesus is answering a question, as I told you, about loving your neighbor. And the guy says, who is my neighbor? And when Jesus concludes this, he's going to say, uh, go and do likewise. In other words, don't worry about who your neighbor is. You be the neighbor. You be the neighbor and love people that need help. But I believe also in this parable that Jesus, with his words, explained the whole story of the gospel. That loving your neighbor is also sharing the story of the gospel with them. And so I want you to notice some of the details here. He says, a certain man came down to Jerusalem. I believe that man is talking about Adam. He went from Jerusalem to Jericho. I believe that he went from perfection being created in complete purity before the Lord in the Garden of Eden, but then he sinned, he went to Jericho, which is a sign of an unbelieving uh, city, and he went from the Garden of Eden, the presence of God, uh, to being out of the presence of God with thieves. And thieves represent, of course, the thief. Satan doesn't come except to steal, kill, and destroy. The serpent in the garden, Satan, according to Revelation 12:9. He comes, uh, in uh, John 10.10, 10, to steal, kill, and destroy. And the Bible says these thieves stripped him of his clothing. What did they do? They stole his provision, the Garden of Eden. And now he has to go out and work for a living. And the Bible says they wounded him. They stole his health. There was no sickness in the Garden of Eden. But when these thieves came, then his health was stolen. And notice this. It says... They left him half dead. What does that mean? Adam and Eve were physically alive, but spiritually dead. Everybody understand? Isn't that interesting? Half dead. Now it says a priest and a Levite passed by on the other side. The priest and the Levite is religion or the law. The law was sent, but it couldn't save us from our sins. The do's and the don'ts can't get us to live righteously. And in fact, the Bible says they were sent so that we would realize we can't do it without a Savior. And they were leading us, actually, to Jesus. And then it goes on to say, a certain Samaritan. Now, a Samaritan was considered a foreigner. You can look that up in Luke 17, 16 to 18. A certain Samaritan, or somebody from another place, as he journeyed, came where he was. I believe that's talking about Jesus, who came from another place, heaven, and he traveled to come where he was, wounded man, talking about wounded humanity, humanity. And it says he bandaged his wounds. What did Jesus do when he came? He healed people. He brought healing. He bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Oil and wine is, are types of the Holy Spirit. Oil is a type of the Holy Spirit in the new birth. Wine is a type of the Holy Spirit in the outpouring or the fullness of the Holy Spirit. And it goes on to say, he set him on his own animal. I believe Jesus provided the strength that we needed. In fact, the infilling of the Holy Spirit gave us strength to be able to go stronger than we normally can go. So the power of the Holy Spirit. It says he brought him to an inn. I believe that's the new birth. We're in Christ now. And uh, he took care of him. That's providing all of his needs. And then notice this. When he departed, what did Jesus do after he came and died and rose again? He departed. It says, when he departed, that's the ascension back to heaven, he gave the innkeeper two denarii. Everybody say denarii. Denari. Now, let me tell you what a denarii is. It's a piece of money, a coin, and a denarii was one day's wage. So he gave him two denarii. That would have been two days' wages. And he said, here's two days' wages. Whatever more you spend, so that means it could be a little more than two days' wages, he says, when I come again, this is another reason I believe this is talking about Jesus, because he is coming again. Uh, he said, when I come again, I'll pay you whatever you need. Now, let me remind you of 2 Peter 3, 8, where Peter said, But beloved, do not forget this one thing, that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years is one day. And so, when Jesus gave one denarii, that was one day's wage, but if we calculate like Peter was calculating, Peter said, yeah, but to the Lord, one day is like a thousand years. And a thousand years is like one day. So could it be that this man that gave two denarii, two days wages, 
that each of those days doesn't represent just a day, but it represents a thousand years. And he's given him enough to carry this man and to sustain him for 2,000 years. For 2,000 years. Well, think about this. Jesus is talking and teaching this about 30 A.D. And here we are in 2015. You know what that means? That means it's been 1,985 years. We've got 15 years left on this 2,000-year timeline. What am I talking to you about? I'm talking about the calendar now, okay? Now, I can't get in there and dogmatically, in other words, uh, without any question, tell you this is exactly what it is. We've got 15 years for this whole thing to wrap up. No, because Jesus also said, and if it's a little more, I'll pay you that. He said, if. He said, if, didn't he? He said, if. So see, on this, he didn't nail it down. All I'm telling you is that I think these are hints and signs to us that we should pay attention to. Well, that was a portion of the message called Signs on the Calendar, and I think this is a fascinating message. I really enjoyed studying this, researching it, and teaching it, and it was only a portion. You can get the entirety of the message absolutely free by going to jerrydearman.com and clicking on Signs of His Coming. That's the whole series title, talking about signs of the second coming of Jesus Christ, and you'll get the entire message or the entire series free of charge. In fact, on my website, there are many series that are available free of charge. We just want to get the Word of God to you and allow you to fill your heart with God's Word. By the way, it's so important that you not be afraid, that you keep the joy in your heart. Make sure that Jesus is Lord of your life and then follow Him, fellowship with Him. And He'll lead you, He'll guide you, He wants to protect us. But the judgment that's coming on the world is not judging God's people. The judgment that's coming on the world is judging the world. And so what we want to do is make sure we're not a part of the world, that we're a part of the family of God, but also that we're helping our friends, our family, and everyone that we know to become a part of the family of God. So let's pray together, can we? And as I pray, you pray too. Let's reaffirm that Jesus is the Lord of our lives. Father, we come in Jesus' name. I pray for this person watching and their heart is touched. I pray in Jesus' name that as they open their mouth and say, Jesus, I want to make sure that you are my Lord, that I'm saved, that I'm not part of the world, but I'm part of the family of God. I receive what you did on the cross, dying for my sins. I thank you that your blood paid for all of my sins. I don't have to pay for them. I don't have to measure up. I can receive salvation completely by grace. Father, I also pray that this person would be strengthened by the Holy Spirit to walk away from sin and to begin to live the life that you designed for them to live. I thank you for it. And I bless this person in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And listen, friend, let me just give you a few tips. When you make Jesus the Lord of your life, get baptized in water. Jesus commands everybody to do that. Go to a church that baptizes in water. Get baptized. Secondly, read your Bible. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you to understand it. Don't say, I can't understand it. Ask the Holy Spirit. He will help you to understand it. And be in church every week. Allow God's Word to be taught uh, in your hearing so that you can be strengthened by the Word of God. And then let me give you one more, and this is a favorite of mine. We have seen thousands and thousands of people changed by discipleship through a discipleship system called Operation Solid Lives. And if you go to my website, jerrydearman.com, and click on OSL online, it'll take you to that interface, and you'll realize that the first level is only four weeks long. But I've said this to people for 10 years or more. Give God four weeks and see if He doesn't change your life. And people take me up on it by the thousands and their lives have been changed. And I want to say that to you. Go and click on OSL Online and let God change you in four weeks. Walk through the orientation and then begin to engage with the system. I'm telling you, God loves you and He wants to change you by the power 
of his word. Hey, if you're ever in the Southern California area, come visit us at the Rock in Anaheim. What a treat that would be for us. And don't forget to set your DVR and catch all of these broadcasts because they have some fascinating information that I think you're going to be thrilled about and become aware more than ever before about what's happening in our world and how it lines up with biblical prophecy. Well, as always, I want to remind you before I go that God is always faithful. We love you, and we'll see you next time. Signs of His Coming is a timely new series from Pastor Jerry Dearman at The Rock in Anaheim, California. In this series, Pastor Jerry covers a number of the key signs that point to Jesus' return, including the mark of the beast, the Antichrist, the significance of Israel, the fragility of the world economy, nation rising against nation, and the blood-red moons. The message on today's program was only an excerpt from this powerful series. To listen to this message or series in its entirety, go to jerrydearman.com to download it absolutely free. There are also many other inspiring teachings available for free at jerrydearman.com by clicking on Free Downloads. You also have the opportunity to purchase this 9-CD set at jerrydearman.com. Write to us at Jerry Dearman Ministries, P.O. Box 4970, Anaheim, California, 92803, or call us right now at 1-800-544-8000. We would love to hear from you if you've committed your life to Jesus Christ, if your life has been impacted by Pastor Jerry's messages, or if you would like more information about partnering with us to help take the gospel around the world. Please go to jerrydearman.com and click on Contact Us today. Operation Solid Lives, or OSL, is a free, highly effective, and proven system of discipleship developed by Pastor Jerry Dearman. Over 170 churches, in addition to The Rock, currently use OSL discipleship in the U.S., as well as hundreds of churches in 11 countries worldwide. Thousands of people to date have had their lives transformed through OSL, not because of a program, but because OSL is designed to saturate you with the Word of God, drawing you into a deeper relationship with Jesus. Experience how easy it is to start level one of Operation Solid Lives absolutely free. Visit OSLonline.com, then click on Get Started. You'll have the option to lead an OSL small group with a few of your friends and family, or you can take OSL as an individual. It's only four weeks and it's free of charge online. Join the thousands of people who've had their lives transformed. Get started today by going to OSLonline.com. We're so glad you've joined us today for Solid Life with Jerry Dearman. Our prayer is that you've been inspired to believe that God is always faithful to fulfill His promises in your life. If you have a prayer request or testimony you would like to share, visit us online at jerrydearman.com. Write to us at Jerry Dearman Ministries, P.O. Box 4970, Anaheim, California, 92803, or call us at 1-800-544-8000. If you or someone you know is in the Southern California area, we'd love to have you join us for services this weekend. The Rock is located at 295 East Orange Thorpe Avenue in Anaheim, with service times on Sundays at 9 and 11.30 a.m. and Sunday Night Live at 6 p.m. For more information about The Rock or Jerry German Ministries, visit us online at jerrydearman.com or call us at 1-800-544-8000.